Do you feel like you're wasting time trying to figure out what to study rather than actually studying? Well, I help aspiring professional engineers like you to become sure that you'll pass the PE exam on the first try. And this is the series where every day I give you one insight, one rule of thumb, one key distinction, or one fundamental idea so that little by little you can get clear on what matters and how to focus your valuable time and energy. In today's daily insight, we're going to talk about the latent heating and cooling of air. Now, previously, we talked about the sensible heating and cooling of air and the rule of thumb for that, which is 1.08 CFM delta T. But now we're talking about latent heating and cooling, which is adding or removing moisture content from the air, so humidification or dehumidification. And we're doing that latent heating or cooling in the context of keeping the dry bulb temperature exactly the same. So we're moving vertically up or down on the psychrometric chart. And the rule of thumb is lesser known, but equally useful. Might not be a bad idea to memorize this one as well. And it says that the latent heating or cooling is equal to 4,840 times the CFM times the change in not temperature, but humidity ratio. So if we think about our psychrometric chart, we're talking about that vertical axis over on the right side. This is the humidity ratio here. So if we're going vertically up or down from state one to state two, if we're going from one to two, that would be latent cooling. If we're going from two to one, that would be latent heating. And you have to have a fully defined state one and two. So you'd have to know enough about states one and two to be able to come over here to the vertical axis and determine what that humidity ratio is. But as long as you're able to do that, then we can find out the difference in the moisture content between states one and two. Now we have to be careful of the units. We said in the previous video that the sensible heat was always gonna come out in BTU per hour. That's also true for the latent heat. So these are our expected units. The constant depends on the density of air, but it doesn't vary much. So the rule of thumb is really built for using typical units. And this will be useful for most reasonable ranges of temperature and humidity. Most of what's kind of in the middle of the psychrometric chart it works well there. And the CFM is the volume flow rate it has to be in CFM. That's implied. And the humidity ratio has to be in pounds of water or pounds of H2O. I'll write subscript W for that, but you can write H2O if you like, per pound of dry air. It's also possible to express humidity ratio in a unit of grains of water per pound of dry air. You have to make sure that you're using pounds of water per pound of dry air when you use this formula. And I just want to stress this rule of thumb is only for air. So if it's any other vapor, then you would not want to go to this. But as long as you have the right units, then you should be able to use this formula. And that's today's daily insight on the latent heating and cooling of air. All right, guys, I hope this video was useful. When you're ready to start putting these ideas into practice, head over to mechanicalpeexamprep.com. There are tons of original practice problems with detailed video solutions that are easy to watch. And the course previews are free, so go check it out. And until next time, happy studying.